This video provides easy to follow instructions for you to create this yoke using Onshape. Click below in the video description. Here you will find links to all of the resources you need to complete this project. First, there is a link for a PDF instruction sheet. Click this link and open the project drawings and specifications in a new browser tab. Next, if you don't have an Onshape account, use one of these links to create a free account at the Onshape website. Last, there are links for each of the segments of this video. The video instruction is organized into five segments. In segment one, you will read the engineering drawings. Segment two will establish the design intent. In segment three, you will create the part model using Onshape. Next, you will check the accuracy of your model by checking its mass properties. Last, you will check the design intent by making changes to the model to see if it will update correctly. Now you are ready to begin the project. In this segment, we'll read the engineering drawing for this yoke. Let's start by identifying the views provided in the drawings. First, there is an isometric view showing the yoke as a three-dimensional pictorial. Next, two orthographic views. On the bottom, a front view. Projected above the front view, a top view. When planning a parametric model, we first need to identify its basic shapes and included features. In the front view, the right side shows a rectangular tongue. On the left side, a rectangular yoke. The yoke end has a rectangular top and bottom plate. Between the plates is a rectangular space. In the top view, the yoke end shows a semicircular end. Concentric to this end is a hole through both plates. Also in the top view, the tongue end shows a threaded hole centered along its length. This view also shows a semicircular hole centered on the end. The corners where the tongue meets the yoke are rounded with a fillet. Next, we'll look at the dimensions and notes. First, the dimensions are in decimal inches. The overall length is 6 inches. The tongue end is 3 inches. The yoke end is 2 inches measured to the center of the semicircular end. The width is 2 inches and the semicircular end has a radius of 1 inch. The through hole has a diameter of 1 inch. The yoke end has an overall height of 2.25 inches. The top and bottom plates have a thickness of 0.625 inches. The rectangular center space has a height of 1 inch. The depth of the slot is 2.25 inches from the semicircular end. On the tongue end, the threaded through hole is 1 half inch by 13 threads per inch. The semicircular end hole has a radius of 0.5 inches or a diameter of 1 inch. The fillet has a radius of 0.375 inches. The top and bottom chamfer on the hole through the yoke is 0.0625 inches at 45 degrees. The material is set to cast iron. The mass is set to pounds. Next, let's establish our design intent. To start, we need to identify any features that might be changed during the design process. The length of the tongue end of the part may need to be increased. Also, the length of the yoke end of the part may need to be increased as well. The width of the part may need to be bigger. Next, let's consider the features that should not be changed when the part is revised. The size and specifications of the holes should remain unchanged. The size and location of the fillets and chamfers will not change. The height of each end of the part will remain the same. The part should maintain its symmetry. So, if we are able to apply constraints to the model that will make it responsive to these changes, we can change the length of the tongue end and the length of the yoke end and change the overall width of the part. The model will update without errors. Before we model the part in Onshape, let's preview the steps in the modeling process. First, from the drawing, we will identify the profile we will use for the base sketch. In this project, we will use the top view to create the base sketch. Sketch 1 will be placed on the top sketch plane and the origin will be placed at the center of the line that separates the tongue end from the yoke end. This is the base sketch. From sketch 1, extrude 1 will add thickness to the tongue end of the part. Sketch 1 will be used again for extrude 2 to create the yoke end of the part. Sketch 2 will define the location of the space in the center of the yoke end. Extrude 3 will remove the material from the yoke to create the center space. The whole feature tool will be used to create the one inch concentric hole through the yoke. The whole feature tool will be used to create the half inch threaded hole through the center of the tongue. Fillet one will round the edge between the tongue and yoke ends. Chamfer one will break the edges of the hole on the top and bottom of the yoke. 
This results in the finished part. So now let's get started in creating the yoke. I have started a new on shape document and named it yoke. The workspace units are set to inches and the mass is set to pounds. Start a new sketch and choose the top sketch plane. Use N from the keyboard to view the sketch normal to the screen. Use P on the keyboard to turn off the visibility of the sketch planes. We will start with construction lines to define the length of each end of the part. Click on line and construction, click on the origin to start the line and stretch it horizontal to the right for the tongue end. Double click to end the line and enter three for the length. Click on the origin to start another line. Stretch it horizontal to the left and enter two for the length. Next, choose center point rectangle from the sketch toolbar. Hover on the midpoint of the construction line and click to start the rectangle. Move the cursor to hover on the end of the construction line. When the end point turns yellow, stretch the rectangle up and click to set the width. Click on the dimension tool and click on the end of the rectangle. Enter two inches for the width. For the yoke end, use the center point rectangle again. Choose the midpoint of the construction line. Click on the top corner of the rectangle and right click and end the rectangle tool. Next, we will add the semicircular end. Choose center point arc from the sketch tools. Click on the end of the construction line to start the arc. Click on the top end of the rectangle and then the bottom end to form the rounded end. The line should turn black indicating that it is fully constrained. On the other end, click on the end of the construction line to start the arc for the semicircular notch. Click coincident to the line to start the arc and coincident for the end. Enter 0.5 inches for the radius. This completes the base sketch. Use the green check to accept the sketch. Right-click and choose Isometric View. Next, we will use the Extrude tool to add thickness to the tongue end. Click on the Extrude tool on the Feature toolbar. This will be a new feature. For the Sketch region, click on the tongue end of Sketch 1. For the Depth, enter 1 inch. Check the box for Symmetric to center the feature above and below the sketch plane. This looks correct. Use the green check to accept the feature. Now we will add the thickness to the yoke end of the part. Click again on the Extrude tool on the Feature toolbar. Choose the Add option to join this to the existing part. In the Feature list, hover over Sketch 1 and click on the eye to make the sketch visible again. For the Sketch region, click on the yoke end of the sketch. Set the depth to 2.25 inches. Click the checkbox for Symmetric. This looks correct. Use the green check to accept. Now we will use a sketch to define the size and location of the rectangular notch centered on the yoke end. From the toolbar, click to start a new sketch. From the feature list, choose the front sketch plane. Use N on the keyboard to view normal to the screen. This plane is at the center of the part, so to see the sketch plane, we can make the part transparent. Right-click on the part in the parts list and choose Make Transparent from the menu. In the feature list, Hover on Sketch 1 and click the eye to make it visible so we can use the existing construction line in Sketch 1 to center the rectangle. Now, from the Sketch toolbar, choose Center Point Rectangle. Move the mouse to find the end point of the construction line and click to start the rectangle. Drag the rectangle out beyond the end of the yoke and click. Right-click and end the rectangle tool. Click on Dimension Tool. Dimension the height of the rectangle to 1 inch. Dimension the distance between the end of the rectangle and the edge of the yoke to 0.75 inches. This looks correct. Use the green check to accept. To remove the material to create the notch, click on Extrude. Click on Remove. For the sketch region, click on Sketch 2 in the feature list. For the end type, choose Through All. Click the box for Symmetric. This looks correct. Use the green check to accept. Next, we will add the one inch through hole to the yoke end. We will use the hole feature tool to create and place the hole. Click on the hole tool on the feature toolbar. We will set the specifications for the hole in the dialog box. First, the hole will be specified in inches. It will be a simple hole. For the hole type, choose drilled. The size will be one inch. Scroll to the end and choose 1.0. It will start on the sketch plane. It will be drilled through all. For the point to place the hole, we will use a mate connector option here. When I click on this option, 
the automatically generated mate connectors show up when I hover over the face. Notice that the center point of the semicircular end is displayed as a mate connector. Click on this mate connector to use its location for the whole center. This looks correct. Use the green check to accept. Now we will use a sketch to define the location of the threaded hole on the tongue end. Start a new sketch. Click on the top face of the tongue to use for the sketch plane. Use N on the keyboard to view normal to the screen. On the sketch toolbar, click on the point tool. Start by hovering the cursor on the horizontal edge and watch for the midpoint to light up in a yellow box. Next, move the cursor to hover on the midpoint of the arc on the end. Now move the cursor to the center of the face and look for the yellow projection lines to light up and locate the intersection of the two midpoints finding a center of the face. Now click the mouse to place the sketch point at the center of the face. Using this technique, we have constrained the point location to the center of the face and it will remain centered even if the length or width of the tongue is changed. Use the green check to accept the sketch. Now we can use the Hole Feature tool to place the threaded hole at the center point. Click on the Hole tool on the Feature toolbar. Again, this is in inches. And it is a simple hole. This time, it is a threaded hole, so we will choose Tapped. For the tap type, it is a straight tap. For the size, it is half an inch. For the threads per inch, it is 13. At the bottom, it should be checked to tap through all. For the location, click on the point location from Sketch 3. This looks correct. Use the green check to accept. Now we will add the fillet to round the corner between the tongue and the yoke ends. On the Feature toolbar, click on the Fillet tool. Set the radius to 0.375 inches. To place the fillet, click on the edge where the tongue meets the yoke, first on the top, and then the bottom. This looks correct. Use the green check to accept. Last, we will use a chamfer to break the sharp edge on the hole on the top and bottom of the yoke. From the feature toolbar, choose chamfer. For the chamfer type, choose distance and angle. For the distance, enter 0.0625 inches. For the angle, enter 45 degrees. To place the chamfer, first click on the edge of the hole on the top of the yoke, and then on the bottom. Use the green check to accept. This looks right. This completes the part. In this segment, we'll check the accuracy of the model by checking its mass properties. To check the model, the mass units should be set to pounds and the material set to cast iron. If the size and shape of your model was completed accurately, the mass should be 3.29 pounds. Let's look at this process step by step. First, open the document that contains the model of the yoke. Next, check the workspace units and make sure that mass was set to pounds. Next, set the material to cast iron. Go to the part in the parts list. Right-click and choose Assign Material. In this case, we're searching for cast iron with a density of 0.252. Click to select it. Next, go down to the lower right corner and click on the Display Mass Properties button. When the dialog box opens, click on the part, and the display shows a mass of 3.29 pounds. If this was your result, then your part is accurate and matches the specifications. If not, we can troubleshoot to locate the sketch or feature that has an error. First, locate the rollback bar in the feature list. Move the rollback bar up to just below extrude 1. The mass now reads 1.413 pounds. If you have an error here, examine sketch 1. Now move the rollback bar down to below extrude 2. This adds material for the yoke end. The mass is now 4.571 pounds. If you have an error here, examine sketch 1 or extrude 2. Now move the rollback bar down to below extrude 3. This removes the material to form the rectangular slot in the yoke. The mass is now 3.546 pounds. If you have an error here, examine sketch 2 or extrude 3. Now move the rollback bar down to below the 1 inch hole. This removes the material to form the hole through the yoke end. The mass is now 3.298 pounds. If you have an error here, examine the specifications used for the 1 inch hole. Next, move the rollback bar down to below the half inch threaded hole. This removes the material to form the threaded hole in the tongue end. The mass is now 3.263 pounds. If you have an error here, examine the specifications used for the half an inch threaded hole. 
Next, move the rollback bar down to below fillet 1. This adds material to form the fillets. The mass is now 3.293 pounds. If you have an error here, examine the specifications used for the fillet. Now, move the bar to the end. Again, the mass should be 3.29 pounds. If you have an error here, examine the specifications used for the chamfer. You should now have found any errors and your part is accurate to the specifications. In this segment, we will make some revisions to the part and check if our design intent has been applied correctly. We will start by reading the revision drawings to identify the features that will be changed. First, the length of the tongue has been increased to 4 inches. The rectangular portion of the yoke end has changed to 3 inches. The overall width of the part has increased to 2.5 inches, which results in the radius of the semicircular end increasing to 1.25 inches. With these changes, the overall length of the part is now 8.25 inches. The other features, including the height, hole sizes, and location, and chamfers, and fillets should remain the same. If the part updates correctly, the revised mass should now be 5.781 pounds. Now we will make the revisions to the yoke. I have opened the on-shape document that contains the part. The dimensional constraints for the length and width were specified in the base sketch. We will start by double-clicking on Sketch 1 to open for editing. Use N on the keyboard to view normal to the screen. Let's start with the length of the tongue. Double-click on the dimension for the length of the tongue and change the value to 4 inches. Double-click on the dimension for the yoke end and change the value to 3 inches. Double-click on the dimension for the width and change the value to 2.5 inches. Use the final button to preview the changes. This looks correct. The threaded hole remains centered on the tongue end, and there are no errors shown in the feature list. Use the green check to close. Now, click on the Display Mass Properties button in the lower right corner. Click on the part. The mass is 5.781 pounds. If your result matches this, then your part has been revised accurately.